Hi, this is Carissa Farley of Farley Interlocking Paving, and I'm here with my very own green team to introduce you to some new ideas about alternative energy that could potentially change the way our city gets energy, or perhaps how the whole world gets energy. And I want to introduce you to my team, Greg Babington. Energy Site Incorporated. And Mary Herja. Aurora Renewable Energy Solutions. So let's go talk to Steve Vidal, a local inventor, and see what this is all about. How is your thought process different than how we're currently solving those problems? Our principle is not different from almost any other kind of, of uh, technical principle of, of heat exchange. And that is exchanging heat is far easier than generating heat. Being able to transport heat from point A to point B is always cheaper than being able to generate heat by burning a fossil fuel, for example. Steve, can you see a time where potentially um, most of the homes here in the desert use this system for heating and cooling and, and saving natural resources and doing it? Will, will our system, or an adaptation of that system, replace uh, uh, heating and cooling or potentially? And the answer, without any doubt, in the desert is yes. Our ability to take the, the heat from a small greenhouse and put the heat into the ground by simply running the air through the, through the ceiling and after it runs through the ceiling, run it into rocks that we put in the ground and the air will exchange the heat with the rocks in the ground and it comes back up again and does it uh, so that over a period of time, something like eight months, the temperature out here never got below 68 degrees, no matter what the temperature was because the ground temperature is at 75. So you're constantly doing this exchange. It is an absolute natural for the desert. What, what we're hoping to do is, is to show that, that uh, a large scale heating and cooling can be done with nothing more than heat exchanging. What other industries can you see this being used for? <clears throat> well, what you're looking at is inexpensive energy in the form of heat. Heat is the basic default form of all of energy. All right. So once you once you get it down to the heat, what can you use it for? And the answer is, can can you make electricity if you have a hot flame from a butane torch? Yes, you can. So the the, the applications uh, are probably unlimited. So Steve, uh, my name is Mary Hurria, and I'm with Aurora Renewable Energy Solutions. I know that combining you know, technologies is where to go. What are your thoughts? The, my thoughts are this, that, that wind energy is an energy source. Solar energy is an energy source. Geothermal energy is an energy source. Okay, so unfortunately is uh, uh, the burning of fossil fuel, but we don't like the fossil as a source. So <laughs> what, what we're proposing, whatever the source is, if it's adequate, uh, it is going to be probably more economically feasible if that source can be stored. The wind doesn't always blow at the same pace, even though it always blows. I've been to some place in Montana where it doesn't ever seem to stop blowing. But, but anyway, uh, can wind energy be used to store uh, energy for our system? And the answer is, of course it can. We, we could use a solar collector, a photovoltaic solar collector, in order to, to compress air. When we take compressed air and you put it into a vortex tube, you're gonna come out, there is no energy or virtually no loss. You're gonna come out with 50 degree higher air on the hot side and 50 degree lower on the cold side. The wind, and that can do that all day long. Anytime the wind is blowing, it's not lost, okay? You want heat? Yes, we'll take the heat over here and put it into heat storage. You want cold? Yep. So you, you can come out, let's say you've got 70 degree air that you're 70 degree compressed air, all right? On this side, it'll come out at 120, and this side, it'll come out at 20 degrees. Now, you run that into the rocks and you've got storage. Wow, that's impressive. I, I'm so happy to meet you. This thermifer device of Steve Vidal, this space is a mock-up of a habitable space. Could be a, a home or an office space. It's insulated but it's actually an active part of the whole collection process for heating and cooling. In the roof here, this insulated roof has a air space of approximately eight to 10 inches, and it circulates 
through a low speed, uh, could be a DC or a PV powered fan that takes the hot air from that space through the building walls and down underground into the graded aggregate storage medium below our feet here. And if this were an outdoor space, these paving stones here are permeable, which would allow the exchange of air or water moisture as a heat and, a, and cooling medium to, to dissipate the heat or collect the cooling for whatever seasonal use you're after. Uh, what we gotta see here that's the most important thing is it's approximately 85 degrees outside today and this thermometer shows that it's about a comfortable 72 degrees indoors here. And we even have the door open. So the beauty of this device is having heavily insulated walls, uh, having a, a mechanism by which to exchange either the heat or the cold, dependent upon what you're trying to collect, can give you additional comfort in your building and maybe even overtake your conventional HVAC systems at some point in the future. Now let's check back in with Carissa Farley, whose progress towards developing a clean filtration system for runoff and wastewater has landed her in high profile magazines such as Palm Springs Life, Desert Home and Garden, and more. Hi, I'm Carissa Farley from Farley Interlocking Paving, and we are interlocking paving contractors who work throughout Southern California but are based in Palm Desert, locally in Palm Desert. Interlocking paving stones, for anybody who doesn't know, are segmental units, individual units that are hand placed or machine placed in sand. Um, we also specialize in an engineered process as opposed to architectural that is designed for stormwater management and is a LEED certified green technology. Imagine a bathtub that you turned on the water and the, and the hardscape, the water flowed right through the hardscape. Basically that's how this works. So imagine a commercial building, it captures stormwater on site and instead of allowing the water to run off um, polluted, dirty, into either surrounding uh, waterways or into the stormwater management system, this basically opens the earth and allows the water to go back into the ground on site, right there at the commercial building, and purifies it while it goes through an infiltration trench, and then recharges the aquifer. Not only is it about um, being a good citizen and recharging our aquifer with clean water and being conscious of our water use, um, it also is something that in this economy could save builders quite a bit of money. In this diagram, when you have stormwater, 70% of it infiltrates through the ground, is filtered and put back into the, into the aquifer or the groundwater. 10% of that evaporates up into the air, and only about 20% runs off um, into your, your water reservoirs, your streams, your lakes, or into your stormwater system. On the right-hand side, this shows a developed parcel of land. We've got houses and buildings, and a majority of the hardscapes, the, the earth is basically sealed up with concrete and asphalt. In that kind of scenario, maybe only 20% of the water can get through undeveloped like planters and green areas into the ground and recharging. 10% will still evaporate up into the air, but in this situation, 70% runs off. And the problem when it runs off is it collects oil, it collects um, pollutants, it collects pesticides, and that runoff water becomes polluted, dirty, um, and is either put into your stormwater system where it has to be treated or pollutes rivers and streams. This is a huge issue when you get close to the beach areas where traditionally stormwater is dumped into the ocean, and now we're starting to see the ramifications of that in, in our polluted water reserves, in our lakes, in our rivers, in in our oceans, so um, permeable pavers are really important there. Um, there are even advanced uses, for instance, the Vatican puts an ingredient in the concrete, it's used in the paver, that takes 
air pollutants out of the air. The city of La Quinta was very progressive in being um, one of the first cities to have this. The city of Palm Desert is following right behind. Uh, the Living Desert actually has had this system in for 15 years, but it was way ahead of its time. We're really proud to be in the Coachella Valley where a municipality like La Quinta is on the cutting edge of green technology.